Hey everyone, what's going on? So special announcement, due to feedback that I've received from a few people, it seems that there is a change in order. So we're gonna change the format a little bit. Not, not that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to limit these videos to 20 minutes. I may go over now and then, but I'm going to try to do 20 minutes. So the new angle is you can learn to program 20 minutes a day. You practice what you learn and you move on to the next lesson. You can take it at your own pace, at which point you get to await with bated breath the next episode. But the other positives from this is that it's going to allow me to shoot more than one video at a time and I can super focus on one thing and drill into it. Another thing that I've been doing and I'll continue to do is that I'm going to skip over everything but the basics of what you need. The goal here is to get you programming and writing real software as soon as possible, but there's a lot of background the first time around that we need to get out of the way. And once you know that stuff, we can take what you've learned and apply it to real software so you can start building Windows applications, websites, web applications, uh, games if you want to look into that or mobile apps whatever it is you know wherever your heart leads you in the world of programming with that being said we're gonna look at some of the increment and decrement and some of the math rules and things like that it should be a fairly short lesson and we will jump on to new things in the next one sound good okay let's get it on I'm also gonna rename things a little bit I'm going to do the new project. I'm going to also still continue to select console application, but I'm going to name it a little differently. We're going to name it noble cause dot, and we'll call this variables. I'm still going to put this into my episode three. I have a 3.0. I had actually recorded a couple more episodes in the old format, but I'm going to keep those for now. Okay, same .NET 5 framework. Great. So let's start with some simple math. Everybody loves math. This is going to be really simple math. I'm going to create a variable called score, and it's going to be equal to 10. First thing that you probably have a question about is, what is that word var? Well, var is a shortcut. They call these kinds of things syntactic sugar because behind the scenes, it's still making score and it's making an int out of it. It is the same as saying int other score, other core or other score equal 10. It's the same. What happens is the compiler looks at what you're storing, which is a number 10, and it defaults to the best match data type. So if I hover this 10, you can see that it's assigning it an int 32, which is to us an int. Uh, int is an alias for int 32. I never really use int 32. I always use int, but it's the same thing. So it makes score an int. If we hover var, you can see that it's an int 32. If I hover the int over here, you can see it's also an int 32. So that's what it's doing. The, the benefit of that is if I'm making a string, I can also use var. I can say um, first name equal Jeff. And first name becomes a string. It still has the same rules that you would have if you had defined it string. So if I try to type first name and I try to assign an integer, then it complains and it says I can't convert int to string because first name is compiled as a string and it can only hold strings. First name is still treated as a string by assigning Jeff first name as a string. 
So if you prefer using the word string until you get used to it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. There's actually two uh, camps out there where some people love only to use var and other people only like to use the actual data types. So there's no right or wrong, whatever's more comfortable for you. Let's talk about concatenation. You can concatenate strings. If you remember back from the other video, we can add numbers together and store them in a variable. We can also do that with strings. And I think we did it once, but I wanted to just kind of show you with var that you can still do that. So what we're doing here is we're using the post increment. This is one of the few exceptions to the rule when it comes to assigning a variable. Normally, when I assign anything to new total, we look at the right side of the equal sign and we evaluate the expression here, whatever we have to do, if we have to add some numbers or do some math or whatever. In this case up here, we, we did some concatenation where we tacked last name onto first name. And it will happen after the assignment. So let's take a look at what these values are before and after. I can write console.writeLine total and console.writeLine new total. So total is equal to 100. New total, you would think total would increment first. Plus plus will add one. It'll increment the number. Minus minus will subtract one or decrement the number. So total, which is currently 100, is going to become 101 but it actually does it after the assignment. So when we write out total here, it's going to be 100, and new total is also going to be 100, which isn't what you would expect by looking at it because we're actually increasing this. Now, if I copy total down here and just print it out again, then you'll see the 101. So the first console right line is total, which is 100. Oops. And the next console right line is total again, which is 101. Because it assigns 100 to new total and then adds one to total. And same thing with minus minus. Right, we go to 99, but only after we've assigned. If you want it to happen beforehand, you can move the plus plus to the front and that will increment it before it does anything else. So in this case, total will be 100 on this line, on line 15. On line 16, we will increment to 101 and then assign 101 to new total. So total gets to be 101 actually before the assignment happens. So now they're both going to be uh, 101. So if we look at that, you'll get the results that you probably would have expected in the first place. And so that matches up. All right, let's look at a little bit more math. All right, so the big question here is, what is the answer? What's going to be in say what? Is it going to be 8 or is it going to be 6? Let's write that out. Say what? And it is 6. The reason that it's 6 is because C Sharp has a, an order of precedent. If we pull up Google here and we search for C-sharp math order of precedent, we can look for the actual documentation. I believe it's in this one. Arithmetic operators. And if we scroll down enough, here we go. Operator precedents. 
So what this says is the postfix increment, or when we do like plus plus or minus minus, that will happen first. Then any prefixes, which are plus plus and then the variable, we saw how that worked. Then comes multiplication, then division, then modulus. Modulus is just the remainder after division. You can tell C-sharp, do this math, but I'm only interested in the remainder. And lastly, addition, and then finally subtraction is the last thing evaluated. So knowing that multiplication and division and then add and, ma and subtraction, now we can say, well, it's going to do the multiplication here first. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 more is 6, and that's why we saw 6. So what if you don't want that? What if you want to do the addition first? You want to do 2 plus 2 is 4 and multiply that times 2 to get 8. You can tell C Sharp the order to do things in your world by just putting parentheses around. Parentheses are always done first, so now it will add this up to 4 and then multiply by 2. And we should see 8. And we do. So that about wraps this one up. Today we learned about some variable concatenation rules. We learned about var and using that instead of the actual data types when we create our variables. And we learned about numbers and how they're added and subtracted in the order of math. And finally, we learned about the postfix and prefix addition for incrementing and decrementing a variable. And we'll use some more of that when we get into loops. And you'll see how we can use that in counters and that's coming up very soon. So practice, 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 and I'll see you online.